Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I think I'm speaking correctly. Uh, and thanks to FIA and Eater and all for organizing this workshop. So today I'm going to be talking about focus fusion, which is LPP fusion's fast path to fusion energy. Now, focus fusion is our name for the combination of the dense plasma focus device and hydrogen boron fuel. Now, you've heard a little bit about PB11 uh, earlier in the day, but just to review, this is the highest energy density of any naturally occurring fuel. So we don't have to breed anything. We get the fuel components directly from nature. The raw materials are abundant, and because the uh, reaction produces three helium nuclei and no neutrons, there is no production of radioactive waste. Probably most important from an economic standpoint is you can have direct conversion of the energy to electricity. Because you get the energy out as moving electric uh, charged particles, which are electricity, you can convert directly without producing heat, without producing steam, generators, turbines, all that good stuff, which is quite expensive that we've had since Edison. So this is ideal for decentralized power because it's very safe. We can put it right next to the load. Now, the dense plasma focus device is the other part of our approach. Key advantages, it's extremely compact and cheap. So the heart of the machine are these electrodes, which for scale are a total of 20 centimeters across. The central electrode, the anode, is only six centimeters across. So a little different in scale from ITER. Um, our approach is to use, rather than fight, the natural plasma behavior, which is its natural instabilities, which we think is a lot easier. And again, because of its compact size, it's ideal for decentralized power and, for most applications, portable. What we do in our approach is we imitate nature using the plasma filamentation instability to compress and heat the plasma rather than trying to suppress it. Now, tokamaks have filamentation. Filamentation occurs everywhere in the universe when, where you have plasmas because of the pinch effect, where you have currents going in the same direction they attract. At this scale of the Veil Nebula, you see the very beautiful filamentation all through the nebula. And this happens from the scale of the aurora to the scale of quasars. So how do we use this? How does the plasma focus work? Now, the plasma focus has been around as long as the tokamak, but I don't expect most of you are very familiar with it. So this is what it looks like. You start with a small set of electrodes, the anode on the inside and the cathode on the outside, in a small vacuum chamber filled with the working gas. And you dump electricity in a approximately two microsecond pulse from a capacitor bank across a insulator that separates the two. The first instability that develops is a filamentation instability that creates a set of filaments that are forced by their E cross B fields to move down to the end of the electrode. Now, the anode is hollow, so in the second instability, these filaments fountain together into what is called the pinch, and that puts all of these filaments into one filament. Then a kink instability kinks these, this filament up into what we call the plasmoid. And the plasmoid is a self-contained blob of plasma, which is contained by the magnetic fields created by the, its own currents, not by external magnets. We don't use external magnets, but by these very strong currents. And since the plasmoid is only 100 micron or 200 microns across, 
these become very intense fields, uh, thousands of Tesla, and we expect to go even higher. So this compression viscously heats the plasma to extremely high temperatures, and we have achieved and measured temperatures up to 260 keV in the range that it's of interest for proton-boron fusion. And in a final instability, the plasmoid evacuates itself into an ion beam and an electron beam. So that's basically what it, what it looks like. We have published peer-reviewed results that show that this little machine can produce results that are in many ways better than any other private fusion company. We've achieved the highest confined ion energies of any fusion device, private or public, more than 200 keV. The lowest impurities that we've seen published and the highest wall plug efficiency ratio of energy into the device to fusion energy, uh, ratio of fusion energy out of the device to total energy into the device of any private fusion company and the highest N tau which uh, T product, which is of the order of a few times 10 to the 20th. So again, here are peer-reviewed results, density, confinement time, which is very short, tens of nanoseconds, and very high temperature. Total yield about 0.25 joules for an input energy of only 60 kilojoules. And then the input resources to the project to date is $10 million rather than billions. Now, we've achieved both the confinement time and the temperatures we need for proton boron fusion, but we need to go up in density by a factor of a few thousand significantly. If we compare the energy yield, the wall plug efficiency, we are just slightly behind the record uh, achieved by JET, this is for pure deuterium, and well ahead of other private fusion. Now, I learned a few hours ago that uh, uh, Meade's results have, uh, if I'm not mispronouncing them, have increased, so we only are 15 times uh, beyond other private efforts, not 100. So we'll have to put another jump into our yield, which we hope to very soon. Recent progress that we've made over the last year is a 60% increase in our peak current to 2 megaamps. Now, the scaling of the dense plasma focus goes as a power law of the current. So being able to increase the current without increasing the input energy is quite important. And we've had a great reduction in erosion and deposition by going from tungsten to beryllium electrodes. And you can see the tungsten electrodes on the left are somewhat beat up after only 400 shots. The beryllium electrode shows no wear whatsoever. And I cannot resist adding a non-peer-reviewed uh, result from our last month's experiments in which we, for the first time, got high-quality uh, X-ray spectra from the plasmoid. And this is just the sum of two shots but it is amazingly good fit to a 420 keV Maxwellian distribution. This is the electron temperature. The ion temperature is quite a good deal lower, about 100 keV. But this again demonstrates that we are able to achieve and confine extremely high both electron and ion temperatures. So the next steps, we have to optimize the breakdown of our plasma at high currents. Since we're compressing, like uh, general fusion, since we're compressing the plasma, we have to have very good symmetry. And that means the breakdown from the neutral to the plasma has to be very symmetrical. And as we go to higher currents and higher pressures, breakdown becomes more difficult. So we have to optimize that breakdown. Later, this year, we hope during the summer, we will go from deuterium 
to PB11 fuel using a compound called decaborane. First, we're going to have small amounts of decaborane with pure hydrogen and then move to pure decaborane. Again, breakdown is going to be the big unknown because people haven't used decaborane in these sorts of plasma applications in the past. We'll, we will be the first. Now, just briefly, if we can achieve the goal, which is all of our goals, of getting break-even in the laboratory, net energy, we will go on to a much larger engineering um, effort to get a working generator. And that means perfecting our ability to get the energy out. Just briefly, this is how the energy comes out. Most of the energy comes out in the form of an ion beam, which is conveniently produced by the plasmoid itself. And the beam will go into an inductive circuit, which in this artist's conception is symbolized by the simple coil. The real geometry will be more complex. Now, very fortunately, our colleagues in the accelerator field have perfected means of getting energy out of accelerated beams, and they have demonstrated routinely efficiencies of more than 80% re energy recovery. So we'll use their work for this ion beam. The second way we're going to get energy out is about a third of the energy will come from an X-ray pulse. The X-ray pulse will go into a spherical array of, detect, of uh, photoelectric converters. And each layer will convert a small amount of the X-rays to electrons, which will be trapped in a grid. Thousands of these layers will be needed, but since the size of the device is so small, it will still be economical. This is a simple, conceptually simple device, but complex in implementation, so that will be a big part of our development program. What we're aiming for is a compact 5 megawatt generator, 200 pulses per second, with a capital cost with mass production of about a tenth of a watt, a tenth of a dollar per watt, and an electric energy cost of half a cent per kilowatt hour, way below anything that is available today. So the key challenges are cooling the anode. We intend to use compressed helium, and we expect that Eater's experience with this can help a lot. In addition, we'll have materials questions. We'll be using boron fuel with beryllium electrodes. We expect to produce beryllium boron compounds, and we'd like to know about their properties. So, and like anybody else, We'd like to borrow some of Eater's diagnostics, which tend to be quite expensive. So that's pretty much the story. There's a lot more at our website. And thank you very much for your attention.